If you're serious about making home cocktails, then this episode is just for you because today we're gonna to be covering all the essential bar tools that no one tells you you need. Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro, and today we're gonna to be covering all the essential bar tools that everyone seems to forget to tell you you need. What that means is that today, I'm not gonna be telling you to buy a shaker tin. I assume you already have one of those. I'm not gonna be telling you to buy a Hawthorne strainer because you also probably already have one of those. And besides, there are already plenty of articles online and videos on YouTube telling you what you need to set up your home bar. Instead, today we're gonna to be going over some of the tools that I guess might be considered intermediate and things that people sometimes forget to tell you you should buy. If you are looking for an article that covers all the fundamentals, we have one on our website at bartenderlarge.com and I'll leave a link in the episode description down below. And also I think it goes without saying that your mileage may vary. Everybody has different needs for their home bars. So some of these things you might not need, some of these things you might have already bought. But either way, just for the sake of being thorough, I'm gonna cover it all from the top for all of you at home. I know what happens for a lot of us is that when we first start making craft cocktails at home, we're leaving these big old puddles on the kitchen counter. Some of the juice is running underneath some of like the appliances or your toaster and you have a mess everywhere and you're kind of like, ah, how do I avoid this? I recommend just going online, buying a bar mat, throwing one or two of these guys out and when you start making cocktails, you have all your spills, all the messes, everything's contained. When it's time to clean up, you just dump it out over the sink. And on top of that, what makes it even better, these things I think run about 10 or 12 bucks online. You can buy two of them, which I would recommend, put them side by side. And the best thing about these things is that they can take a beating. I've worked in bars where these things were, I don't know, 10, 15 years old and you're still using the same mats. These are the same ones that are used in professional restaurants and bars. So trust me, using one of those at home, these things are gonna last you a really long time. bar towels. Seriously, what happens is when you first start making craft cocktails, you're grabbing like the nice towels, you know, that you use in the kitchen or the bathroom, what have you, and you end up using way too many of them. And I don't know, it just kind of throws off the flow, throws off the laundry list at your house. What I recommend is just getting bar towels, the kind that they use in professional environments, or, you know, sometimes you can buy them at Home Depot or Lowe's or something just as painter's towels. These things are super cheap. They can take a beating. If they get too nasty, you just throw them in the washer. And the reason why I mention bar towels is because they are so crazy easy to overlook. So honestly, these things are inexpensive, they're wildly useful, and I can't recommend them enough. The third thing I would recommend to pick up when you're starting to get serious about craft cocktails in the house is larger size measuring cups. Because I think a lot of times when people first start making cocktails, they think, oh, I have my jiggers, I have everything I need to make cocktails and measure things out. But what about when you have friends over, you make a big tub of grenadine, you make some more jot, you're making honey syrup. You're gonna need larger measuring cups and measuring vessels to do that. I recommend getting some measuring cups in various sizes. That way you have all your needs covered regardless of what's happening in regards to your home bar. Another thing that I recommend that you pick up are little glass bottles. We in the industry call them cheater bottles. And what that basically means is that you have these little bottles that you can fill up with whatever liqueur you have, um, whatever syrup you have, basically so you can keep things looking tidy and organized. And not only that, but you know, say you have a giant, I don't know, liter bottle of some liqueur. But once it starts to get really low, it's just kind of taking up a lot of room. So what you can do is put the rest of it in one of these cheater bottles, label it, and just kind of put it to the side and it just looks that much more neat, that much more organized. And not only that, but they're much easier to work with. My next recommendation basically goes in tandem with the cheater bottles, and that's some funnels. Sometimes they seem so obvious that you need them that people forget them. I can't even think of the number of times I've worked an event where somebody had forgotten the funnels but they're not just for events either because for home bartending, when you're refilling bottles, you know, pouring some grenadine into a cheater bottle, marrying a couple bottles together or batching, honestly, a funnel is super useful and I don't know, I think they cost like a dollar or something. My next recommendation has to do with labeling. The simplest way to do this is honestly just with painter's tape and a Sharpie. The combination of a Sharpie with some painter's tape is super cheap and it'll keep everything organized and you know exactly what's in what. Honey syrup, lemon juice, orange juice, things that are, I guess you're gonna be using day of. However, if you're gonna be labeling things that are gonna be more permanent, 
In that case, I would actually recommend a proper label maker. A proper label maker will keep things looking good, keep things looking professional and clean, but also keeping you organized. A great example of when to use proper label tape are situations like this, as I mentioned earlier with the cheater bottles. You know what, I'm filling this up with Benedictine, this can apricot liqueur, and that's not changing for a while. An even better example is for bitters. When you look at these two bitter bottles, they look identical. But when you rotate them, you see that one is Amargo Chuncho Peruvian Bitters and the other one is Angostura. So this label tape right here allows me to have them side by side without ever having to mix them up. And it makes reaching for the bitters that much easier and that much more efficient. Now the next thing that you might wanna consider picking up are some pour spouts. These aren't for everybody, but if you make cocktails often enough and you're entertained for a lot of people, you might find them very useful. They make it easier to jigger, they make it easier for you to move quickly, they make it easier to pour a lot of syrup, so you know what, you're not gonna wanna put in a 25 year scotch, but if you're cranking out daiquiris, it might be that much easier if you put it in a bottle. You can pick them up online or at a local restaurant supply store and you might find them really useful, especially if you like to entertain. Another item that's easy to overlook and makes your job that much easier when you're making cocktails at home are deli containers or cork containers. These are great for making syrups, for storing your mint. You know, I recommend actually stashing your mint upside down with ice water, but it makes the sprigs look that much better. And honestly, these things are so useful and they're so cheap. I honestly recommend people, if you like to make cocktails, especially for entertaining, you wanna pick up some deli containers. And here's a little pro tip too that I do wanna mention. Say you make a bunch of grenadine, a bunch of simple syrup, and you don't wanna toss it out, but you didn't get a chance to use it. If you have a deli container, you can just put it in the freezer and then pull it out whenever you need it. That way, when you defrost it, the syrup still tastes tasty and you didn't waste anything. No sense in wasting all that hard work that you put into making your homemade syrups. Another thing that people tend to forget, and it's really obvious, is an ice scoop. You know what, if you're making, I guess, a cocktail at a time, you know, you can use those little tongs that come with an ice bucket. But if you're gonna be making daiquiris and stuff for a bunch of friends when they come over, you're definitely gonna want one of these. And you know what, why not pick one up? You can get them online, they're super cheap and super useful. The next thing that you should consider picking up is a teaspoon measurement. I'm a fanatic for the teaspoon, especially because all it is is one sixth of an ounce, which also conveniently happens to be the perfect amount of simple syrup that you need for an old fashioned. And I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking to yourself, Eric, I don't need one of those because I have enough bar spoons that I can measure a teaspoon when I need. But here's the thing. There's no proper calibration or industry standard when it comes to a bar spoon. Look at these two bar spoons, both quality bar spoons, by the way, but you look at the spoon and the measuring amount, those are completely different. One's way bigger than the other. So if you're trying to make sure that your cocktails come out with some level of consistency, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using a more accurate form of measurement. Now we're getting near the end, so we only have two things left to recommend, but one of those is something that you shouldn't forget, especially if you love tiki drinks. And that's a squeeze bottle. Basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna allow you to be more accurate when you're pouring out things that are really heavy and viscous. And honestly, they're so useful and they're so inexpensive that you have no excuse not to pick up at least two or three of them for your home bar. The last one is super, super obvious. I almost didn't even put this in here, but I do feel like it's important, and that's ice trays. You might need more ice trays than you think because you might be making more cocktails than you expect. Now, you know, if you're only making, I don't know, a Manhattan or old fashioned for yourself, you know, when you get home from work, you might not need that many. But as I mentioned earlier, if you're having friends over for cocktails, you're shaking up a whole bunch of drinks for everybody, you're gonna need more ice cubes than you think. Now you can always buy the stuff from the store, you know, I guess your local grocery store, or your local market. But a lot of that ice that you're gonna buy is gonna be pretty shabby and you're not really gonna wanna make a lot of cocktails with it. So I recommend investing in some proper trays. And with these trays, you can harvest whatever ice you need. You don't even need that many necessarily, as long as once they freeze, you pop them out, put them in a Ziploc baggie, and then you can use them later on when you do need them. Because trust me, once you start making cocktails, you have some friends over, you're gonna blow through that ice super quick. So make sure you're putting aside a little Ziploc baggies, or you know, if you're lucky enough to have like a freezer in your garage or something, just stash that bad dog and fill it up with a bunch of ice cubes. All right, that wraps up this episode, but I hope that you at least found a few things in here that you could find useful to apply in your own home bar. But if you think that I forgot anything that's really important to the home bar, go ahead and leave it in the comments below and maybe on a future episode when we do a follow-up, we can include it there. 
But in the meantime, be sure to muddle that like and subscribe button. And also, if you'd like to dive deeper into the world of craft cocktails with me, then be sure to check out the Bartender at Large podcast, which I host on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else where quality podcasts are found. Until then, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you again next week.